he started a florist operation. That's, that's the announcement. Sister Snow, um, we all know it's your birthday this week. Lord, amen. amen. So, Sister Snow, I think you all know we love and cherish you here so much. You know, some people think the rose is the most beautiful, perfect flower. And uh, I think for that reason, sometimes Jesus is called the Rose of Sharon. And Sister Snow, you're the Rose of Faith Tabernacle. Let's sing happy birthday to Sister Snow. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sister Snow. Happy birthday to you. So in addition to the roses, we got you uh, a love offering. And you are required to spend this on yourself and go treat yourself. Amen. Well, thank you. It's good to be home. We had a wonderful time with our family and enjoyed the convocation and then our time away. A beautiful card for a special pastor's wife. And I have a love offering enclosed. I will spend every penny on myself. (laughs) And probably some extra. Uh, The roses, that's my favorite. Yellow, yellow rose. Yellow rose of Texas. Um, The, when we were in away, the kids had a little party for me because Ashley, Amy, and Audrey was all there and Asher, He's the four-year-old blue-eyed twin, and he knows all of our ages. And if you ever tell him your age, he'll remember it. He loves numbers. And he said, Grandma, are you 59? And I said, well, I'm having a birthday. He said, you're 60? (laughs) And I said, yes, I'm 60, which is not till Wednesday, but I'm practicing. And he said, when are you going to be 70? I said, when you're 14, son, when you're 14. (laughs) It's an honor to um, serve you. Thank you so much for blessing me today. And, um, wow, Brother Snow doesn't even have to get me roses now. So (laughs) thank you all very, very much. I'm blessed. Well, God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord of my soul. Oh, I know that God is great and greatly to be praised. Praise, bless the Lord of my 
Sister Tiffany in the house this morning. I saw Brother Raphael here. Praise the Lord. Can we sing that chorus one more time? Oh, God is great and great be to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great. Oh, he's great be to be praised. to Jesus. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Oh, I'm standing on the promises of God. Oh, yes, I'm standing. I am standing. that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God I shall prevail I'm standing on the promises of God standing I am standing standing on the promises of God my Savior Where Christ makes free I'm standing on the promises of God Oh, I'm standing, standing Standing on the promises I am standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God And standing on the promises of Christ the Lord bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming day with the
of the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated this morning. Had a good friend of mine. I've known him for many years. He may be watching this morning. Lives in another city. He came and through and visited. He's a good Good fella, good Christian man. They are just not used to getting excited in church. And so when he visited Faith Tabernacle that morning, Brother Roy Godai, who's done went home to be with the Lord, was probably 82, 83. He got out in the aisle and started having a one man revival. Come up on the platform and got one of the tambourines. I don't really recommend that. But he started shouting and dancing like Miriam around the front, slinging a tambourine. <laughs> My dear friend was looking at him with eyes that big. He had never seen anything like that in church. Another dear sister got all beside herself and excited. But he didn't know that just a few days ago, she was strung out in an alley high on drugs, but had found the Savior. And since she had found Jesus, she was excited. I remember something Bishop T.D. Johnson said years ago. Somebody said, show me in the Bible where Jesus ever shouted. He said, I can't show you but I can show you where everybody he touched did. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad that he reached down his hand and he touched me and set me free. They have no problem getting loud and jumping and shouting at the broken spoke. When they get the groove on, come out of there and not know where they was the next morning. I'm glad you can go home clothed and in your right mind, celebrating all day, all week, every moment of the day that I've been with Jesus in the presence of the Lord. Well, lift your hands and praise him for the glorious touch of heaven. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you raised us up, that you saved us. Put a new song in our heart, even praise unto our God. We magnify you today. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We're getting ready for a baptism. If Braylon will go ahead and get ready, I'll meet her back there in just a moment. Sister Snow and I and get her ready. And after that, the children will be dismissed. We want the ushers to come. We want to worship the Lord in our giving this morning. Now, as the ushers go by, if they by chance happen to pass you by, it's not on purpose. Praise God. Just reach out there and grab a hold of them and uh, put your offering in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God's been good to us and blessed us. Can you say amen? amen? I got five people that agree with that. I said God's been good to us and blessed us and helped us. Amen. 
read and heard of individuals this week that they can't find, some that are missing. This week was going through their regular week, and now they don't know where they're at. Some that have made mistakes this week that will forever alter their life. But God has been good to us and give us another week. Kept his hand upon us, protected us, watched over us, provided for us. You're in the house of the Lord this morning. You ought to take advantage of the moment and seize the opportunity and give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and his grace. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We know that every good and perfect gift comes from you. Bless in this offering. Bless the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Papa used to take me when I was a baby, and I've been coming here for my whole life. I was at my Nana's house when I got saved, and I was four years old, I think, and I asked Jesus into my heart. I want to be baptized because I want to show everybody that I'm a Christian girl. My chains are gone, I've been saved. My friend, Braylon, I remember when you first started coming to church, and I first thought your name was Itty Bitty, because that's all I ever heard your grandpa tell you and call you was, come here, Itty Bitty. There goes Itty Bitty. And today, he is proud of Itty Bitty. 
because you have made his God your God. And you've made a decision to follow after the Lord. And the same God that has helped them is going to go with you and help you. We are proud of you. We pray for you and we thank the Lord that you have made a public decision that the old Braylon is going to be laid to rest and that a new girl, a Christian girl, that's going to follow after God and his word. We thank the Lord for you. And on the profession of you asking Jesus to come into your heart and your life and to follow after him, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, oh, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, from hating grace. There's nothing like seeing a joyous smile of somebody who knows they've just done right by following after the Lord. Glory. We're thankful for the children. We love and appreciate the children. We're going to dismiss the children to Children's Church at this time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's been good to us and blessed us. We thank Him. We praise him. Hallelujah. Brother Justin, appreciated you ministering the word last Wednesday. A week ago, Brother Johnson uh, on his birthday, Brother Preston, Brother Kirkland. We enjoyed our uh, few days away. We was at the convocation. Appreciate all of those that text us and was praying for us last Thursday night. Brother Lorito did awesome job ministering the word, and uh, we enjoyed the opportunity. The Lord really helped us. Had many folks that told us how much the Lord ministered and touched them and helped them in the altars. We are thankful. God is faithful, good to us. I said God is faithful, good to us. We continue to pray for Sister Mary and Sister Sherry and their family. The home going of uh, Ricky Stout. Appreciate Brother Johnson and uh, Brother Otis Lee for taking care of that service and the family, the church family coming together and providing a meal during this time. There's nothing like the family of God. There's nothing like the family of God. And uh, God's been good to us and blessed us and helped us. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I don't know what I want to sing, but I want to sing something. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm not going to say what Brother Lorito said when Brother Brown mentioned about somebody being a rose. He leaned over and said, there's also something that comes on the stem with them roses you ought to know about. And I said, I'm not even smiling at that. And... Um, he used to be a son-in-law, but uh, that was a uh, wonderful expression, and uh, we uh, uh, feel your love and appreciate it very much. I don't know. I, um, Let me see. Got one on my heart here. If I can get the right words. I started singing a song the other day. And, uh, and they said, uh, we've never heard that song before. <laughs> Brother Monty, you're not the only one. But the bad thing about this is this was an old song that I wrote years ago. And nobody had ever heard it. Because I called two or three people and told them about it and never heard it and so I tried to google it and I couldn't find it and then I remembered it was just my special song so and I remember when I wrote it uh, I'd almost start singing it for you but you would you'd probably do what Tim did that ain't no song uh but I uh, wrote it after my grandpa went home to be with the Lord. And uh, part of it goes, can't you see the bright light shine? It's just about home time. And uh, I probably stole part of it from another song. But it's, it's getting close. I said, it's getting close. <clears throat> As all of us in the same house, I thank the Lord we found a house big enough for all of us to get in and spread out. Put Tim and Amy and all the grandkids on the bottom floor. <laughs> Praise God. Ashley and Ryan and Caleb and Audrey in the middle with the kitchen. Sister Snow and I had the loft. Our own room, I thought. Uh, Asher and Aiden found it within about 30 minutes. And it was great. But there's one thing I realized. Is that every day is a gift from the Lord. Ran into some people that I hadn't seen in a while. And I realized... How much time had affected them. You got one opportunity. You're given today. Be best that you make it count for Jesus. I said it'd be best that you make it count for Jesus. You got a song, Amy? Amy? I know. Well, many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. Oh, but I know who holds tomorrow. And I know my hand oh many things about tomorrow oh I don't seem to understand oh but I 
know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand oh many things about tomorrow oh I don't see to understand oh but I know who holds tomorrow and hand hallelujah praise the name of the Lord start to sing a little bit of I know my redeemer lives I'm going to preach to you this morning the Lord being our helper on I know turn with me to the book of John chapter 8 the book of John stand with me if you would for the reading of the word of God let me express our deep appreciation to each one of you we love you. We thank the Lord for you. Somebody said, just go off on vacation next week. You're leaving. You'll leave out on Friday, coming back the next Friday. Just take that week. Just forget all about us. Don't worry about anything. Are you kidding? I, I wake up in the morning thinking, been praying for Brother Raphael. I mean, it's just, I pray for Brother Josh. Sister Brittany, I, I, I've been praying for Brother Mark Allen. Brother Mark had a stroke while we was away. And here he is in the house of the Lord this morning. God in his goodness and grace and faithfulness. Many, many different individuals. Praying for Sister Netta Griffin this morning. Been praying for Sister Susan Sprayberry. She needs a touch from the Lord. Praying for different individuals and needs and different ones. Folks that are acting right, that are not doing right. And uh, folks that uh, need a breakthrough. Folks that hadn't been here in a while. They're not going anywhere to church. And, and uh, just go off and forget it. Well, I'm sorry. I can't do that. And uh, it was about 15 or 20. Didn't know we was away. And they just text us every day. Praise God. Some did, and it was, it was glad, and and uh, uh, I, I uh, you're you're on my heart. That's just the way it is, and we thank God for what He's done and for what He's going to do. Never underestimate what God will do in these altars. Never underestimate the power of one service where the Spirit of the Lord is, and when God begins to move. Because if an individual will reach out, there's a God in heaven that will reach down and change a life for the sake of eternity. John chapter 8 and verse 32. We love you. We thank the Lord for you. Thank you for each card, for each pie, cake, cupcake, donut, Bible, gift, expression, card, during this month. Verse 32 says, and read it with me, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know there's a lot of thinking. There's a lot of opinions. There's a lot of people that are giving ideas. And there's a lot of conspiracy. But there is nothing like the truth. We stand on the truth we walk in the truth. We live in the truth. We abide in the truth. And the truth will set you free. And he that the Son has set free is free indeed. You don't need to be confused. 
You don't need to be stressed. I'm preaching to six people this morning. I said you don't need to be stressed. Take no thought for the things of tomorrow. Why worry about tomorrow? God's already there. Who took care of you and brought you this far? Who reached down and saved you? Who healed you when you're sick? Who provided for you when you didn't think you was going to make it through? The same one that's brought you this far is going to see you through. He's coming for you. And we're believing him. We're praying for Aaron. We believe God. We believe God. I know. I know. I know. Say it with me. I know. Say it one more time. I know. Father, we thank you for your word, the privilege to be in your house this morning, and I pray that you would minister and move in this place, touch every heart and every life, minister and move in these altars. I pray you'd save the backslider. I pray that you would help those that are caught up in the foolishness of sin to realize the error of their ways, realizing there's a God in heaven that knows. And I pray that you would help us to realize this morning, Lord, that no matter what comes our way, that we can rest in a confidence that you're on the throne of heaven and you reign victorious, that you're coming again for us. We are your people. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. You are in control of every situation and circumstance. And we rest assured this morning on the things that we know. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. God bless you as you're seated. In a few hours, folks will be running around in costumes, dressed up. They will be seeking, looking. If there's one thing you need to be seeking after, if there's a spirit you ought to be seeking after, it is the Holy Spirit. If there's one thing that you ought to be hungry for would be the presence of an almighty God that could reach down and get a hold of your heart and your life. We are living in a society like I have never, ever seen or thought could exist. Newsrepublic.com, and I'm going to preach to you the word of God. Stay with me. Newsrepublic.com reported that 84% of young people are moderately worried about the future. 75% of young people are frightened. 60% of them are very worried about tomorrow. They're worried about food. They're worried about inflation. They are depression. There is anxiety and intense pessimism, uneasiness like never before. And the airline industry last year, 2020, was approximately 100 altercations of people on planes. In the past year, there's been over 400 altercations. People are living on the edge. Nobody likes to be told what to do. Nobody knows. One doctor wrote, the problem with this pandemic is, is that most times we see a light at the end of the tunnel. But in this current state, we don't see no hope. We have no answer for the future. But there is a God of hope. And the church is not to be caught up in the middle of all the anxiety, the depression, the stress, and the weariness. What is going to happen? When is it going to happen? Where will it happen? Where will I be? What is going on? Where will I be five years from now? There are some things that I know. And I am going to stand and proclaim this morning the things that I know. Not what might happen. Not what might come about. Not what some doctor is saying is going to happen. Or some political individual, but I know according to the truth, for we shall know the truth, and the truth will set us free. I never thought we'd have to live in such a day where we would have to have an ordinance be brought about to keep the church open. People have asked about it, what the policy is, what does it stand for? It is an amendment 
that the state would not be able to step in. In our current state, I thank God, I pray for daily Governor Greg Abbott. I love and appreciate him. I visited with him personally on the phone through a conference call with several other pastors as he shared with us his heart and that the church was the number one place in the house of God. The house of God was the number one place in the state of Texas that needed to be open. And I thank God, but that leadership may not always be in place and there may come a day when these things come about. Listen to me, friend. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will never pass away. I, do you remember what it was like that first service? We had a few parking lot services. I thank God for the parking lot service. I thank God that we was able to have those. I remember driving by and somebody standing out with a, with a pole, reaching and getting the offerings as you was dropping it in the bucket as you drove off the parking lot. But I remember the first Sunday when we was able to gather back into the house of the Lord. We sat out in here. We got up to sing. Nobody had said anything. They just started hitting the music. You could feel the electricity in the air because there's something about the people of God congregating together in the house of the Lord the psalmist David said I was glad when they said unto me let us watch online no he said I thank God if that's all you can do hear me friend but I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord I love being in the house of God and hearing the word of God I know the natural tendency is for us to think that we know. Have you ever run into anybody that knows? I mean, oh, I like the way you're looking at me. I've heard it said, you can't tell them nothing because they already, they already know it all. Woo, don't be pointing fingers. Anytime you point fingers, there's four of them pointing right back at you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what's a fact. Listen to me, friend. We can think that we know it all. We, it's, it's a natural tendency. But we don't want to realize and recognize that we need help. I mean, I've seen grown men that would try to do it in their own strength. I've seen a man that was a businessman. I mean, he, had, he built a big business and a multi-million dollar business. And, and I showed up to visit with him in the hospital. And while I gathered there to pray with him, I said, look, sir, you made millions of dollars. You've done well, but you're dying and you need a savior. And he looked at me and he said, I've tried to do everything all by myself. I've tried to manage. I've tried to work. I've tried to lay up for my children. I've tried to be a good man. And he said, but right now I don't have the strength to do anything. I said, but I know one you can call on who's able to help you. And he found him to be his savior friend. It's our natural tendency to think we can do it all and that we know it all. It's interesting when you look in the word of God, the first time the word I know is put together, do you know where that's at? It's where God came down and he asked a man a question. He said, Cain, where is your brother? And he said, I know not. Somebody wants to know it all and know how to tell God what needs to be done, but when God comes down to confront him, now he don't know. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach. I'm telling you, friend, there comes a time when you're going to have to give an answer to God. And God came down and asked, Cain, where's your brother? And he said, I don't know. I know not. When he did know. And you can be sitting in this service this morning and you can act like you don't know. But listen to me, friend. There'll be a spirit called the Holy Spirit that will convict you to where you do know if you're doing wrong. But you can act like you don't know. Good to see Brother Fred Medina in the service this morning. Been praying for Brother Fred. 
Genesis 27 and 2, and I've got to get into this. Genesis 27 and 2, Isaac said to Esau, I know not the day of my death. We love to plan things out and put them on the calendar, but every day is a gift from God. And if there's one thing I know, I know that life is a vapor. It's here for a moment and it's gone. And that is a truth, friend. In the New Testament, a man said, I'm going to pull down my barns and I'm going to build greater. But God said, you fool, this night your soul is going to be required of you. Every moment, every day is a gift from God. You ought to serve him to the best of your ability. Job 19 and 25, Job said, for I know, for I, I know my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day on the earth. And he said in 42 and 2, I know that thou canst do everything. He was facing adversity like none other. The patience of Job, but there was some things that he knew. I don't know what all you're going through this morning, but the same God that was a God for Job will be a God for you. And you can know. You can know. Psalmist David said in Psalms 41, 11, By this I know that thou favorest me because my enemies doth not triumph over me. Did you know that you're the apple of his eye? Did you know that his eye is upon you? Did you know that you've been favored by God? Did you know there's other people that you're going to bump shoulders with this week that have never felt the power and the conviction and the touch of an almighty God? But God has reached down and ministered and reaching for you by you that you've been favored Psalm 56 and 9 when I cry unto thee then shall my enemies turn back this I know for God is for me somebody say this I know for God is for me. I said, this I know, for God is for me. I said, this I know in 2021, when the world is turned upside down and many things I don't know, I know that God is for me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Psalm 119 and 75, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right and that thou in thy faithfulness has afflicted me. Oh, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to talk about affliction. But I knew that the Lord, he knows. I got to remember, it's easy to forget. Psalm 50, Isaiah 50 and 7, for the Lord will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore shall I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. There's been a few things I've done I've been ashamed of, but I'll tell you one thing I've never been ashamed of. I've never been ashamed of setting my affection on things above and making up my mind that I was going to serve the Lord no matter what come my way. Listen, friend, I've been through a lot. You don't know what all somebody beside you has been through, and we've been, we've been through a lot of different things, but I know, I know, I know that you can put your trust in Him. John 9 and 25, the blind man said, look here they asked questioning him he said look here he was a sinner he healed you on the Sabbath day he said look whether Jesus is a sinner or not that I don't know but this one thing I do know whereas I was once blind now I see hallelujah I don't know a lot of things but I know this I am what I am by the grace of God I know where I could be when a high school friend of mine wound up in the prison when another one wound up on drugs when another one wound up in, in hell, in death, but I know that God reached down his hand and he got a hold of me. Hallelujah. I know I was once blind, but now I see. A friend of mine I played baseball with as a kid in the backyard, the age of 18, caught up in drugs, went to a man, tried to get some, and they, they owed him some money. They took three, three of them took claw hammers. Beat him to death. Newton County coroner said it was the worst 
grossest murder in Newton County history. There was part of his brains on the ceiling where they beat him to death in their high. And I could have been right there with them. But I know that it was the grace and the mercies of God. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach. They asked his parents. They said, who is this? They said, all this is, this, this is what we know. He was blind. Can I tell you one reason why the enemy's fighting you so is because you're a testimony to the world of somebody who was once blind. All they can say is, I do know this. They used to be out there, but now they're over here. He was. We know this. Romans 7 and 18. For I know that in me, that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. 1 Corinthians 13 and 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. For now I know in part but then shall I know even as also I am known 2 Timothy 1 and 12 for the which cause I suffer these things nevertheless I am not ashamed for I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day there's many things in 2021 that I don't know but I know in whom I have believed I know he's able to keep that which I I've committed and I know I'm going to continue to trust him knowing this James 1 3 that the trying of my faith worketh patience I know God is in control I said I know God is in control even when I don't understand I'm preaching to somebody in the house this morning. You don't understand. Some have given up on God. Some have already turned their back and walked away because of misunderstandings and things they don't understand. But there's some things that I know that the trying of my faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work. I found in the scripture that also God said, I know. Genesis 18 and 19 God said, Abraham, I know him. (laughs) You read it. Woo! (laughs) He said in in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 12, when Abraham took Isaac up the mountain, he said, hold on. Abraham's got the knife dropped back. He's ready to offer up his son Isaac as a sacrifice. God said, hold on. Now I know that thou fearest God. Listen, there were seven major tests in Abraham's life. He failed four of them. He gave his wife away twice. Sarah was a beautiful woman. He got down to the land of the Philistines, was fearful, gave her to the king. God told the king in the middle of a dream at night, said, no, 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 that's Abraham's wife. He said, well, he said it was my sister. I don't care what he said. Out of fear. In 2021, fear will cause you to do a lot of things that aren't right if you're not careful. When it comes down to the test, God looked at him and said, because Abraham had finally learned. I mean, can you imagine? God said, I'm going to make you the seed. I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to, look at the stars. That's going to be your, look at the sand. That's going to be your inheritance. That's, and after 90 and 9, he has a son. Isaac comes along, and then 20 years later, God says, I want you to offer him as a sacrifice to me, as a test. And I love, I love it. I love it with all my heart. I love it. I got a hold of this last Sunday morning. What did Abraham say when he told his servants? He said, I and the lad go yonder to Y'all missed that. I go yonder to worship. What? He's given up his most prized possession. He's given up every dream he's ever dreamed for. He's laying it all. But he said, I and the land, we go yonder to worship and we will come again to you. Hallelujah. And when he got up there, God said, now I know. Now I know. 
Oh, let me tell you something this morning, friend. God sees and he knows. Exodus 3 and 7. He said, I've seen, I've heard the cry by reason of their taskmaster. For I know their sorrow. He knows your sorrow. He's seen every tear that you cried. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. John 10 and 27. For I know my sheep and they know my voice. All through the New Testament you find him saying and all through the word of God. I know their thoughts. I know their rebellion. I know their pride. I know their sin. In Revelation 7, seven times he said I know their works. Hallelujah. He knows. Heaven sees. Heaven knows. I said, God said, I know. Brother Taylor preached a tremendous message, been preached all over the continent. Acts chapter 10. Heaven knows. Cornelius gets down to pray. I can still hear him. He preached it here in 1996. Heaven knows your name. He said, Cornelius, God said, I know. Your prayers and your alms, he knows what you give. He knows your need. Heaven knows. God said, I know. Job 23 and 10 said, He knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Psalms 1 and 6, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Hallelujah. I know some things, but I also know that God knows. Hallelujah. He knows where I'm at. He remembereth my frame that we are but dust. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows and I know that he knows so I can trust him. Audrey bought the the boys some kind of squishy ball. Boys with a ball in a the house, they're going to throw it. And when you got three of them throwing it at the same time, catch Papa. Poof, poof, poof. He can't catch. And they're throwing it wild. They're throwing it left. They're throwing it hard. Hot speeder. Here it comes. Poof. I seen one go up, land on the edge they said I don't know where mine's at but see he's this tall and he couldn't see as a matter of fact nobody except Caleb could see what I could see (laughs) if I want to hide something in the house I just set it on top of the refrigerator the birthday girl could never see anything on top of the refrigerator, girl. If she wants to hide something, she puts it on the bottom shelf. Because this fat boy ain't bending over to look for anything. She want to hide something in the refrigerator, she just puts it down in the bottom. I say, I didn't know we had a regular Dr. Pepper. How long's that been in there? It's been in the bottom shelf for a month, getting cold, waiting for me, she'd say. But see, I was looking at things from a higher level than what they was. You're looking at things down here on the temporal, but God is looking at things from above on the eternal, and he knows, hallelujah. And I don't understand why it happened, and I don't understand why we're going through it, but I know, I know in whom I have believed because I know that he knows. And there's some things that we know. I found that. Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. Look at this. For the, I reckon that the suffering of this present time 
are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know, for we know, for we know that the whole creation groaneth. This world is groaning right now. Y'all ain't hearing me. And travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption <laughs> to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he yet hope for? For if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Verse 26, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us which, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Hallelujah. We know, oh glory to God. We know that God is in control. 2 Corinthians 5 and 1, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Verse 6, Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. While we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. First John 3 and 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I know some things, friend. God knows, and we ought to know that it's going to be all right. God's going to see us through. So why should I get worried at the next news cast? For we know that all things work together for the good to them who love God, who are the called according to his purpose. Come and help me, musicians. Romans 13, 11, and that knowing the time, it is now high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. I'm convinced that the church is being rocked to sleep, but we ought to know the time. I'm not talking about 1148. I'm talking about the time. The door is about to be closed. There come a day when God spoke to Noah and he said, get Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Get Sister Noah. Get their wives and get on board the ark. And they got on board the ark and God closed the door. The door is open right now for the church age. But God is about to close the door on the day of grace. I thank God for His amazing grace to me. I thank Him for His mercy. 
But you can't continue to trample it underfoot, friend. Because God's going to close the door. And when God closes the door, I was getting gas the other day and somebody just started talking to me. I don't know what it is. Oh, I do. I do. I did just say, what do you think about everything that's going on? And I looked at him, I said, it's the greatest day to be alive. What planet are you from? I'm from over there. That's where I'm going back to. My king is coming for me. And I'm, I'm going to be caught out of here in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I'm fixing to leave. H- have you not heard of Jesus? Oh, yeah, I've heard of him. Well, he's coming again. And knowing the time, it's high time. We know that we have a hope beyond here. We know it. So I must stand on what I know. I must stand on what I know, not what I think. Not what catches up in the middle of the news media and overwhelms me. We're not part of the fearful. The fearful and unbelieving is going to be cast out. We walk by faith. Somebody said, well, what if what, 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 what if we can't eat? What if we can't? Well, we could, most of us could survive a few days. Hallelujah. I told somebody just the other day, I said, God, my Father, He still has ravens. And the Bible said that Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And God Flew, had ravens fly into old Ahab's kitchen and pick a T-bone up off the table and fly out the window and bring it down to the old man of God and drop it by the creek. Oh, I don't believe that. Well, you need to. He, there was a little woman that was there and she had just a little cruise of oil and said, I want you to give it. I want you to make me a cake. And the Bible said that the barrel of oil never ran dry. Hallelujah. I know. I know in whom I have believed. I know that God has saved me. I know that God has kept me. And I know that he's going to. And I know that I'd be a fool to try to hide something from him. Hear me this morning. God knows. If anybody knows, God knows. And what is going to be your excuse when you stand before Him? And Him look at you and tell you, I gave you multiple chances. And the last Sunday of October, the preacher told you, there's some things you could know that you could stand upon in a world that's shaking and changing every 30 seconds. And that you could know the eternal destination. You hear me? There's a heaven and there's a hell. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how strong you are. I'm fixing to call us to the altar. But I'm going to tell you this right now. I was called by a family to visit a man in the hospital. Because he needed the Lord. I went and I asked him and I talked to him. He was gasping. His voice was raspy. His lungs was full. He was moments away from death and he was pushing himself up, trying to push himself up in the bed. And he looked at me and said, Preacher, 
I made it this long by myself. I can make it without him. I wept. I talked to him. I stand there talking to family. As God is my witness, he said, my feet are burning. My feet are burning. Somebody get my feet. I'm dying, I'm dying, my feet are burning. The last words out of that man's mouth was screaming of the torment that he was moving into and would not call on the truth. You say, you you believe, Brother Snow, that God would have saved him. I believe that God would have reached down right there. I believe that God sent the answer that was standing right beside his bed. Not me, but Christ in me was willing to minister to him. You say, well, I'll get saved when I get ready. I'll really commit everything when I get ready. Listen, friend, I've known of those that was driving down the road and suddenly went into eternity and didn't have time. But right now, the answer is right next to you. And you can leave here and say, I know that it's well with my soul. I know that my God and my hope is in heaven. I know. Hallelujah. (laughs) Thus saith the Lord, I know your name. I know the thoughts and the intents of your heart. And I am calling you today. And I will save you. I will redeem you. I love you. I am calling for you today. Do not harden your heart. But come to me and live, saith the Lord. Stand with me all over this house. Right now, the Spirit of God is drawing you. Don't you wait another moment. You come to this altar right now. Come on. You come to this altar right now. The Spirit of God is drawing you right now. Don't you wait another moment. Don't you leave here and say, well, I'll go at a different time. You come right now. Come on. Don't worry about what somebody might say. I could care less what somebody would think. We're talking about the eternal destination of your soul. We're talking about the eternal destination of your soul. (laughs) Hallelujah. 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 Call on the Lord. Call on the Lord. Call on the Lord. Call on the Lord. Lord. You need you need help from the Lord. Call on him. You need help from the Lord. Call on him. You've been weary. You've been weary. You need the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to come. I want I want folks to come and help me pray. Hallelujah. You that are in this altar, surrender your all to the Lord. All over this house, come. Come pray with your family. Come pray with your family. Come on. I know, Lord, I can leave here knowing. Oh, come on, sisters. Come help me pray. 